Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this review. Today we're talking about Lost in Harmony, the musical Odyssey. This is a rhythm game with runner elements and a touching narrative. The game was developed by DigiXArt, I think that's how you say that, an independent game studio in France, and it was originally released on iOS and Android, but later ported to Steam, and this week was released on the Switch. I picked it up on Switch and was pleasantly surprised, so we're going to talk about that version today. <laughs> Lost in Harmony was created by one of the co-creators of Valiant Hearts. If you didn't play that, it was a really cool cartoonish look at World War I. It was incredibly touching, with a limited narrative that focused on non-traditional storytelling techniques that are especially effective in games. The game also has a focus on narrative, but a much more limited one. The scenes and dialogue are very minimal, with just some short text between each stage. The real impact of the story is told through the music as well as the atmosphere and tension created by the visuals. The game is split up into two different stories. The first, Kaito's adventure, revolves around his relationship with his girlfriend Aya, who's undergoing treatment for cancer. And it's as affecting as you would expect with that. The second story, Mirai's Escape, is a futuristic storyline about a musical robot set to be destroyed who escapes and is trying to outrun his creator. It's told in a very different way, with Mirai receiving messages from his creator and commander, as well as reading news headlines. It doesn't take itself serious, but it does have some really interesting ideas for a quick silly story. The gameplay is a mix of a runner and rhythm controls, but there's no tutorial or game manual, you just get dropped in and good luck. Each stage has the character moving down towards the screen with the player able to move left, right, and jump to avoid all kinds of obstacles coming from in front, behind, and from the sides. You get indicators for where objects you can't see are going to come from, so you have a warning on where not to be. Stages also have lines of stardust which act as safe guides for the player and which also increase the completion percentage for that stage. In order to pass a stage, you must get over 50% on it. Your percentage increases as you safely move through the stage and collect stardust. Most stages also have three orbs which jump you up 10% each. Taking damage from obstacles or missing buttons in the rhythm segments will decrease your percentage. It's worth noting that everything in each stage is timed to the music. When obstacles come into the screen and when to switch lines of stardust is all time to the music, so don't just play it like a runner. The rhythm is important for guiding your character. The other half of the gameplay is the rhythm segments that pop up throughout the stages and change up the action from moving to having to hit four buttons as the markers line up in time. There's also markers with red trails that you'll need to mash the button for and ones with white trails that you need to hold on. You also may need to press, mash, or hold multiple buttons at once. Gameplay switches back and forth as the stages get harder, and sometimes you have to balance both at the same time. The Switch version also has touch controls like the original release. You can hold and drag on the character to move them, but you're usually blocking any obstacles below your finger when you do. You also have to drag up to jump, which is not ideal with how often you have to do that. Overall, moving and jumping is much easier with the buttons. However, the rhythm segments are actually pretty tough to get a handle on because of how the indicators line up in a row. Using the four face buttons, I was constantly getting confused about which button lined up with each line. The game also doesn't really give you enough practice with those segments, so it's tricky to get used to it with how quick they are and with how often you're switching back and forth between the play styles. The touch controls are actually better here. Just tap, mash, or hold the indicators on screen and you don't need to worry about the buttons at all. Overall though, there's no ideal way to play it. If you play with the buttons, moving and jumping is easy, but if you play with touch controls, the rhythm parts are easier. Overall I recommend the buttons, and I use the Pro Controller for most of the game and still manage to get through it all and enjoy it. One issue that's surprising to see in the game design of a rhythm game is that the difficulty is really inconsistent since it's all based on the song. 
So it's not like you start with easy levels and move on to harder stages in a standard progression. For example, the rhythm segment at the end of stage 1 is pretty brutal for newcomers, but later stages have slow segments which are much better at helping players get used to the buttons. Thankfully, because of the 50% threshold to complete a level, you can bomb a segment and make up for it elsewhere. It's definitely worth noting that the visuals of each stage really make the game a compelling experience. The stages are beautiful and stitched together in some really interesting ways. The visual style of each stage is distinct and interesting and some elements even affect gameplay. These include roads that you can fall off of or a slope which can pull your character in a direction. There's also curved roads which make it hard to see where obstacles are coming from. The way obstacles come on the screen can be really striking too. While some stages between the two stories share similar elements and styles, for the most part each stage is really different. Despite it being a rhythm game, it's amazing how much care went into building these creative levels. The level design itself can also affect the balance of the gameplay, with some levels focusing heavy on the rhythm gameplay, while others focus mostly on the different aspects of the runner gameplay. Characters are also given a lot of life through the visuals. This is more true in Kaido's story because having Aya on the board with Kaido, who calls out and reacts to some obstacles, adds a lot of visual interest to her character. Even though she reminds me of Navi from Ocarina of Time every time she says, Hey! The game has 26 tracks. The music in the game is pretty different between the two stories. Most of the music in Kaido's story are mashups of classical music remixes. They're actually really effective and great to listen to. You should recognize most of the tracks from just hearing them in other media. And even if you're not into classical music, the remixes give them a real boost. It's not quite the same, but it kind of reminds me of what Atlas did with Catherine's soundtrack, which was amazing. The music in Mirai's Escape is less inspired by classical stuff, it's more electronic, but it's still great. There are also three lyrical songs in the game which are really good, including a new song by Wyclef Jean. Overall, the soundtracks are great, and since they're available online for sale, I'll probably pick them up to listen to outside of the game too. The game starts off with 24 stages between the two stories and has two difficulty modes. The normal difficulty is manageable but can still be tough in parts. Hard isn't so much harder than normal, so you can complete those missions without being an expert at the normal mode, but it does throw some nasty tricks in there. My most hated is the way that obstacles to jump over appear as soon as lines of stardust start. Unlockables include visual customizations for your characters. As you play through the game, you'll be able to unlock new shirts, hats, headphones, and skateboards for Kaido, and more wave patterns and colors for Mirai. The game also has two unlockable stages in Kaido's Adventure, which are great. So overall, this game is hard to recommend as a rhythm game or a runner. You kind of have to consider it its own thing, and for what it's trying to do, I highly recommend it. As a rhythm game, the gameplay doesn't compare to anything else in the genre, but everything else about it makes it such a different experience, and both the storytelling and visuals are such a huge step up from others in the genre. It's also unfair to call it a runner, just because that genre is mostly defined by time-wasting shallow games. Lost in Harmony has an incredibly strong creative vision and meticulously designed stages that make it much more than just a runner, despite the inspired gameplay. Just some other random observations, the menus can be a bit janky, changing your board in Kaido's game or moving between Info and Mirai's story is just strange, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay, it could just be polished a bit more. Also it looks like the mobile version had a level editor, and I didn't find that in here, so I don't think it was included. Finally, unlike many other mobile games that jack up the price for a console release, especially on the Switch, this is a pretty fair and comparable price for the game, it's definitely worth it. Overall, I love this game. I want to share it with others, so I hope you check it out. Based on this review and footage included, it should be clear if it's right for you or not. There's so much shovelware available on the Switch right now, let's not let Lost in Harmony get lost with all that stuff. Thanks for checking out this review. I'm moving towards a lot more reviews like this, so please subscribe if you're into that, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!